Right, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're back to boring comparative anatomy, unfortunately. So I'm going to be talking about um, my PhD work on Eliphas reci. This is um, a group of fossil crown elephantids from the late Cenozoic of East Africa that hopefully I will convince you play an important role in understanding the um, current mess we have about the phylogeny of elephantids at the moment. So just to, um, first of all, um, credits go where credits due. I have a lot of people to um, thank for um, helping me realize this um, wonderful project. But um, these chaps in particular, who for their um, in many inspiring discussions and um, for their facilitation of me to um, go around looking at wonderful materials. So after that, let's go straight in. Like um, a lot of classic stories in natural history, it begins with some um, European colonials pillaging their way through the tropics. That's what the, um, that's, that's what the Germans did in the um, Olduvai Gorge in what is now Tanzania in the early 1910s. Um, so they, fa they found um, these elephant fossils that were obviously similar to what was then known as Elephas antiquus, now we call Paleoloxodon from Europe. So um, they, they wonder, well, let's call it a subspecies, Elephas, reci, Elephas antiquus reci, and um, since then, the um, best materials referred to this Eliphaz reci have been discovered by the um, French excavations led by Camille Arambourg in the Omo Valley of southwestern Ethiopia. However, it was realized that the Omo reci is not entirely either stratigraphically nor morphologically completely homogeneous with the nominotypical reci from um, Old Vibe Bed 4 in Tanzania. So um, Camille Arambourg came up uh, with, a, with a, a subspecies for his reci that was subsequently regarded by some workers as proper reci, whereas others referred to the um, Tanzanian form as proper reci. So that has introduced chaos in the fossil studies. And um, subsequently, uh, some Africa became the hotbed for the um, quest for our early ancestors. Um, several um, international expeditions were organized in, in um, Ethiopia and Kenya, where more fossil elephant materials referred to reci became um, uncovered. And, and so to um, reconcile this situation, what Vincent Maglio did in his classic monograph of um, elephant evolution was to divide the reci into different biochronological stages, um, which he deemed of um, biochronological utility, obviously. And um, Michel Bedan, in his PhD thesis, took this further by um, dividing materials referred to reci into um, five successive chrono subspecies. Um, based on apparent um, trends in morphological changes, such as um, increase in the uh, number of lamellae for sharing plant food, uh, which make up an elephant's tooth, and, um, other, and um, other morphological traits like increase in um, the hypsodonty and also um, lamellar frequency. That is how densely the um, molar lamellae in an elephant's tooth is packed alongside the um, mesial distal uh, length of the tooth for those of you who are not too familiar with elephant anatomy. But when we take a cladistic approach to this problem, it all breaks down. So in um, Nancy Todd's PhD thesis, um, she, um, she, she um, scored these cladistically alongside other fossil and living elephants using a cladistic data set of primarily dental characters. And um, you see here the, um, the um, terminals attributed to the reci lineage are labeled with asterisks. And you can see that it's a, it's a complete breakdown. And part of the problem is that um, as elephant teeth wear, you get, 
you get uh, secondary morphologies such as these enamel figures, which can be highly variable interest specifically. Oops, sorry, I'm going backwards. Um, and then recently, the um, problem is confounded further when, um, with ancient DNA evidence, which actually shows that, um, um, right, so um, for a long time, people have thought that the Eliphaz Rekai complex is a lineage that successfully led to the Eurasian Paleoloxodon from an Eliphaz like ancestral form, but that's not what the ancient DNA data says. So, um, what this, uh, this big ancient DNA study of um, living and fossil proboscideans have shown that um, instead of descending from an Eliphaz like ancestor, um, Paleoloxodon from Europe descended from an ancestor that's closely related to the African elephant and has subsequently um, received genetic contributions by hybridization with um, an ancestral lineage of the African forest elephant and also from another ancestral lineage closely related to mammoths. So it's a big mess and uh, it calls for a critical reappraisal of the um, elephant phylogeny as we know it. So that's where my research comes in. And fortunately for the East African rekai remains, as well as um, lots and lots of isolated teeth, which um, I've said before are problematic, we have some nice skulls. So, um, the, so these three skulls are the, um, are the primary um, materials of rekai I'm using in my updated cladistic analysis of, um, of all elephants. And um, in case you're not too familiar with East African geography, that's no problem because I've labeled um, where they're from. So um, this is um, Eliphaz Rekai Atavus from um, the, from the um, area here east of Lake Turkana in northern Kenya. And um, we have Eliphaz Rekai Brumchai from um, Omo in southwestern Ethiopia. And then we have this form attributed to the nominal typical Rekai from the Afar Depression in sort of central northern Ethiopia, where um, celebrated um, early hominin remains like Ardipithecus and Lucy the Australopithecus have been uncovered. And um, for uh, as a modern baseline data set to explore the effect of interest specific variations that have screwed up previous cladistic analysis. I have the benefit of a large collection of modern elephant skulls in London's Natural History Museum collected during a time when the colonials operated a policy of shooting every exotic beast in sight. And so um, some preliminary results based on a subset of 137 cranial dental characters that I have found to be um, be to be behaving relatively well across um, all the taxa that I've looked at. Um, to my surprise, uh, in this 50% uh, majority consensus tree, I have recovered the molecular topology which put places um, Loxodonta, the living African elephant, as sister clades to the Paleoloxodonts. And um, other interesting um, side stories from this analysis are the um, potential importance of um, new skulls coming out of China in um, understanding the early Eurasian evolution of the most boring group of elephants ever known as mammoths. So we're not talking about them today. Um, today our focus is the rekai. And um, not, too surprisingly, um, the, not too surprisingly, the three cr supposed chrono subspecies end up in different places of the phylogeny. So, um, we have the nominal typical rekai here um, joining other paleoloxodonts. We have, um, we have um, Atavus from um, Lake Turkana in northern Kenya joined alongside the Asian elephant. And um, here, here are just some pictures to show you, the, um, to sh to show you how they um, group together. I don't have too much time to talk about the apomorphies, but you can see them from the overall skull shape. There's these. Um, wide premaxillaries or tusk sheaths um, with this um, frontal projection known as the parietal occipital crest. 
And uh, as you can, I've put a, a modern African forest elephant skull here, just so you see the similarities. So maybe the molecular results aren't completely supported by, um, aren't completely unsupported by uh, morphology. That's at least my opinion. And then we have um, Atavus joining this uh, nice Eliphaz group that is marked by these um, ve very prominent um, parietal bosses on the skull, roof filled with air sacs. The um, premaxillaries or touches are more tapered than Loxodonta. And um, finally, most curiously, we have this um, messy bag of things lying at the um, stem of that common ancestor between Eliphaz and mammoths, they don't form a monophyletic group. So I'm hesitant to put a formal taxonomic name on it. But then I realized um, these skulls share some similarities with um, a skull excavated from the early Pleistocene of um, the Russian Black Sea region near um, Krasnodar in terms of um, these um, moderately developed um, parietal bossing of the skull, but less prominent than that of um, what I would call Elephas sensus scripto, the group that includes the modern Asian elephants. Um, the skull, the skull, the frontal aspect of the skull is very wide across um, the orbits, wider than the maximal width across the occiput, and um, the and um, this, skull, this Russian skull was um, named back in 1958 by Vazim Garut into the um, new genus Phanagoroloxodon. Um, that's not the most recent paper that has talked about this taxon seriously, but it's almost the most recent paper that has discussed this with any seriousness. So um, in sum, we have this slightly messy bag of things um, with with similar morphology that were widespread uh, across Eurasia in the um, late Pliocene and early Pleistocene. So what does this hold for elephant evolution in broader terms? So um, when, we look at the, um, when we look at the molecular divergence estimates for um, living and extinct elephants, including mammoths and Paleoloxodon, we see that um, we see this very strong support for an early, a late neogene radiation about here of, um, of the crown elephanted ancestor in Africa. However, however, then we come, then the, uh, my analysis implies is that um, in addition to these well-known forms, we have um, an early ra earlier radiation about here in the late neogene of this messy bag of things that are hardly talked about in the literature. So um, is there conflict between um, molecules and fossil record? In this case, I actually don't think so because um, new work in China has revealed that we already have mammoths with almost all the bona fide cranial apomorphies of mammoths that have already dispersed into China by the late Pliocene. So what it implies is that um, in the earlier fossil record in Africa, we have some sort of cryptic ancestor to this messy bag of things. But it's um, but we don't know what that what we don't know what that ancestor exactly is or look like because when we look at the earlier fossil record of elephants, it's an, it's an even more um, honey badger's breakfast of a fossil record of a, of a few isolated teeth and some mandible fragments. You get a fragment of a skull if you're very lucky. Things that um, we don't have many apomorphies to work with, unfortunately. And so it's, um, it's all, it's all nice and fun un uncovering um, new perspectives about um, early elephant evolution in East Africa, but um, does it have a broader significance? I think so. For instance, uh, we have to ask ourselves, why were these very disparate forms all grouped under Rekai? And um, one obvious reason is, um, is um, dental convergence. Teeth are the most common elements we find of um, elephants in um, in the, 
in the fossil context. Um, so um, the red high from East Africa is, um, has always been grouped with Eurasian Paleoloxodon thanks to these, these dental similarities. But then when we look at um, the, the um, Siwalik Eliphas planiforms and Eliphas hysodricus, things that we are pretty sure have nothing much to do with um, Paleoloxodon, we see that, we see that the um, convergence in dental morphology is staggering. And um, I think there's a straightforward explanation for that, which is that um, dental evolution was under this strong evolutionary ratchet in the late Cenozoic of East Africa as, um, the, as climate became drier and um, habit, habitats opened up, um, grassland, was pro, grassland was proliferating, so there was a strong there was strong evolutionary selection for ability to process tougher vegetation. And um, so just a, a final note on the relevance of the Eliphas Rekai story. This is Bale, Bale Mountains National Park in Ethiopia when I went in June. The um, largest herbivore in the local ecosystem is um, a kudus. And um, as you can see, the habitat was very bushy. and um, why do you think this is relevant? It's because um, one, I, one important idea about um, the early evolution of bipedalism in hominins was that um, mega herbivores like elephants were um, diversifying and also, um, and also opening up habitats on their foraging. And um, I think it is very important to under that to understand this process, we need to know who's who in this evolutionary story. So um, a quick flash of the principal conclusions from my study and um, a paleoloxodon sized um, thank you to all these, pe to all these people, but um, in particular to the um, Earth Sciences Departmental Investment Fund from the Natural History Museum, which supported this research. Thank you, Zarina, and also to um, Max Stockdale and Ben Moon from the um, University of Bristol Paleobiology Research Group for um, dealing patiently with my um, endless queries about TNT. And uh, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>